Good day. Welcome to Open Billing Designer Connect Edition session. For today's video, we would like to guide you on how to model structured elements in Open Billing Designer. These are the topics that we'll be going through. We'll learn how to model buildings, steel columns, steel beams, and how to place slabs by boundary. In our Fansworth Housework set, we'll create a new file called fh underscore struct underscore zero one. We'll be using the design seed. As our floors and grids have been configured in the previous video, let's set our active floor to the ground floor to place our footing. We'll also fit view in order to see the entire grid. Our footings can be found under the structural tab, steel column, and we'll change the catalog type to foundation pier. We'll also change it to rectangular pier in order to have the dimensions of 800 by 800 millimeter. Before placement, let us do some settings. So for this model, we'll be placing by grid, so grid 1 and grid 3 has an offset of negative 100 mm for the y-axis and a base offset of negative 200. The length, which is the height, is 200 mm. Left-click and drag to select the relevant grids. Using Place by Grid allows us to place our structural elements quickly and easily. So for grid 4, it has a similar setting but we have to remove the negative, so it will be 100mm. For this model, we don't need any footing for grid 1D, 1E and 4A, so we will go ahead and delete it. The section size, now that we're done with our footings, we'll move on with our column. The section size is selected by the profile, which is the I-beam. So we can look for HEB, and more specifically, it will be HE200B. So we also change the settings. We remove the base offset. We'll change the place by to grid and we'll change the height to 850 millimeters. We also remove the coping and set the placement to top center. So select grid one as well as 3A. For the remaining of grid three, we have a column height of 500 millimeters. For grid 4, we'll change the placement type to bottom center and we'll keep the height as 5000 mm. So now we're done with the columns, we can move on to placing our beams. Before we move on, if you're seeing that your dialog box is away, what you can do is to drag it to either sides of your screen. All you have to do is to adjust using the grey bar. Now for our beams, what we'll be selecting is the C channel beam. So instead of looking for the individual section names, what we can do is to look for the C profile and channel 200 by 90 by 8 by 10. So again, we'll change some of its settings. So we'll set it to top right, we'll set the offset to negative 1707.5. We will change the place by method to two points and you will turn off coping. So for this case, we'll select or we will snap to 2A and press enter to lock. Move our cursor towards 1A and snap to that grid. So we'll repeat the same for the opposite side. So instead of selecting 2C, we will select 1C towards 2C. And once you're done with that, we will join the two by removing the offset. So we're done with that, we can place our eye beam. So instead of looking for the profile, what we can do is to search through the search bar. So what we're looking for is 180UB22. So we have zero offset, we'll place by two points. In this case, we'll turn on coping. We will change the coping option to all interfering member. We'll select plane corner and we'll remove the clearance and radius corner. So what we're left with is to change the base offset to negative 21 millimeter. 
using the grid as our reference, we'll snap to 2A and just like the channel beam, we'll snap to 1A. And just like this, we're done with one of our beam. So we can create multiple of this beam by using the copy tool. We'll select the eye beam, making use of our grid line as our reference, and we'll create eight copies with the distance of 1,662.5 mm. And just like that, we have our structural framing. So now that we're done with that, we can move on with placing our slabs. So under the slab tool, we'll change it to the concrete slab. We'll change the height to 20 mm with an overhang of 20 mm and replacing it from bottom. We'll also set the base offset to negative 190 mm. For our slabs, we'll also be placing by boundary, which allows us to snap to the corners of our eye beam. So now that we're done with one of it, what we can do is to mirror for it to appear 20 mm away from that grid. So you can do so for the left hand side. Using the mirror tool, we'll change the mirror direction to vertical and we'll create a copy. Now that we've made two slabs, what we can do is that we can use the same slab and create multiple copies, just like the I-beam. We'll set the copies to seven copies based on the center line of the next I-beam. With that, we've created our precast concrete slab for our lower terrace. To complete this slab, what we're left with is to place our default slab. So again, we'll go back to the slab tool and we'll change it to default slab. The height is 21 millimeters. We'll remove the base offset, change the place from to top, and we'll remove the overhang. We'll still place by boundary for this method. Similarly to our previous slabs, we will snap to the inner corners of our C channel beam. So you can do so in the 2D view or the 3D view. And once you're done, right click and now you will have your lower terrace completed. Now that you know how to create your lower terrace, what you can do is use the same skills to create your upper terrace. What we have to take note of is that for the I-beam and slabs, we have 12 copies. We also have to set the active floor to upper terrace. And once you're done, you'll have something like this. Once you're done creating your upper terrace, what we can do is to create a copy of it using the copy tool. Make sure to only select the floor components using the element selection and change the active floor to roof. Here, you can copy the floor components to the top of the grid. Before we end it off, we'll place a ceiling plasterboard with a height of 10 millimeters. We'll remove the overhang, the base offset, and we'll place from top. Just like the slab, we'll place by boundary, snapping to the inner corners of the C channel beam. And once you've rotated your building, you'll notice that you have a nice ceiling for your Farnsworth house. We hope you've enjoyed today's session. On your screen are some of the ways that you can get more information about Open Building Designer Connect Edition. Also, please don't forget to subscribe and like our page. Thank you.